Hello and welcome. My name is Francesca. I am an Italian knitter and this is episode number 15 of an Italian knitting podcast. Welcome. I live in the northeast of Italy with my husband, my daughter and my cat. And I work as a software engineer and I'm just now done with my work day for today. And I feel very tired and my brain is a little bit fried. So fingers crossed that I managed to talk about knitting in a way that makes sense to you <laughs> and to me as well. Uh, but we'll go through the usual finished objects, works in progress and a little bit of acquisitions. So you know what to expect. Buckle up. Maybe get a drink, either cold or hot, depending on the hemisphere you're watching this video from or the time of the year. And other than that, I would recommend you to put on some sweatpants, but you do you, whatever you'd like to do. I'd like to be comfy, but anyway, let's go. I am wearing my first finished object. You've seen this before in an unfinished state. But this is the Dad's Sweater by Emily from Gently Chaotic Knits. And I test knitted this pattern for her together with a lot of other test knitters. It was a very well organized test knit. We had like a group chat and everyone could chime in with questions and stuff. But yeah, just the sheer amount of testers that were involved was amazing. The pattern has lots of different sizes, very size inclusive, but it's also quite like shape inclusive, if that's a word that exists. Um, so it comes in two different shoulder versions, the standard shoulder version, which is what I test knitted, and the broad shoulder version. So for all different sizes that come in the pattern, you can also choose to knit either the standard shoulder version or the broad shoulder version. And the broad shoulder version is based on what you typically consider men sizing. And some of the test knitters knit the broad shoulder version for themselves because they felt like maybe conventional clothes kind of were too tight uh, around their shoulders and so they chose the broad shoulder version for themselves and I've seen that other people knit a version for their partners so yeah I don't just what I'm trying to say is that if you look up the pattern you'll see different sizes but also um, shoulder options the pattern is a very I think clean looking construction it has a folded collar that has a set in sleeve where you knit part of the front and the back you join them together and then you pick up stitches around the armhole and you start knitting the sleeve cap and then from there the full sleeve the pattern is very well explained I found it quite engaging because unlike a raglan construction, which is just you know where you're gonna go into in terms of like you just increase, increase, increase and then you split and then you move on. I think for this construction, it I think it's good for those people who want to be engaged a little bit because you're doing one side and then you pick up stitches and you do another side and then you do this and then you do that. Things are changing quite fast and it never gets boring. That said, I'm 100% a raglan sweater person and I love raglan constructions. So I still love and I will continue to knit raglan sweaters, but I'm trying to convey that this pattern is never boring. It has a good amount of positive ease, but not too, too much. And keep that in mind because we'll go back to positive ease in this episode. <laughs> um, so I think like this is very, very comfortable around my shoulder area, my kind of chest area, everything. And I've chose the second size for myself, which it's made for my bust measurements. I didn't try to go with a kind of different amount of ease than the one recommended in the pattern. I actually kind of followed the pattern in terms of recommendations. This is how the sweater is meant to fit on someone. This is the positive ease that you should get if you, if you choose to knit this pattern. The yarn that I used is my favorite. It's Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Rust which is, I think, a lovely autumny fall shade. And I think it's gonna be good for the winter time as well, but it really reminds me of leaves, I don't know, coziness. 
and I have a little bit of uh, the soft silk more hair left but I ran out completely of merino. I used four bowls of the merino and five bowls of the mohair and this is what I have left so maybe I used like four and a half bowls of mohair. The final price for me came down to 74 euros for the entire sweater which I think for me for a sweater that I think has a lovely shape and it's very comfortable I'm kind of I guess I'm happy to pay that much. If you find mohair itchy and you have not tried the knitting for olive if you can give it a go maybe you can do like a, a smaller accessory to test this yarn out if you're scared about buying more hair for a full-on sweater but like the softness i think it's spot on like i'm not a person that's very sensitive so i don't know if i can judge but for me this is super 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 comfortable i would not think twice before like knitting a hat or a cowl or something that it's like close to my skin I think it's very lovely and I keep touching it. <laughs> I cannot stop petting the mohair. Does it look weird? I think it does, so I shall stop. I didn't do really modifications to this pattern other than I ended up doing regular bind offs. Not regular, but like not the recommended bind offs that come in the pattern which is the Italian sewn bind off, tubular bind off. I did not do that. I'm like the enemy <laughs> that that cast on has. Maybe because we're both Italians and kind of we fight each other. I don't know. I went for a stretchy bind off, the one where you do yarn overs before you bind off a stitch. And I actually did a yarn over every other stitch. So. I yarn over, bind off, bind off, yarn over, bind off, bind off. So I have like 50% of yarn overs in my bind off. I don't know if that's the proper way to say that, but yes. And even at the bottom here, I did what I just mentioned. So not the Italian bind off, but like just a stretchy bind off. And I typically wear, <laughs> is this awkward angle? I typically wear my sweater tucked in a little bit. I, see, I think it looks great, does it? Let me go back a little bit. And yeah. I love the color, the shape. Let me think if there was something I didn't like. Well, actually, there was one thing. Let me come back to you without destroying my plants. So one thing that I kind of changed, or I guess I didn't like, is that for the folded collar, what the pattern recommends is to bind off while also sewing down the collar. So you should pick up a stitch and bind off, pick up a stitch from the inside of the collar and bind off and continue until you're done with the collar. However, I tried that, it was so fiddly and so tight in the end that I scratched that plan and what I did is I just bind off and then with my regular needle I just went and sewn down the collar and that gives me enough stretch it's not tight at all yeah I think that's it and if you're on Instagram you can follow the hashtag for the dad's sweater and see a whole bunch of other versions in different colors, different sizes, different yarns. I chose the mohair plus the merino, but I think lots of other people did just one strand of DK weight yarn and all the versions look quite lovely. And to her test knitters, Emily actually gives an extra pattern to say thank you for testing for her. So in addition to the final version of the published pattern, Testers also get an extra choice for another pattern that she published in the past. And so I actually asked if I could use that bonus, that extra pattern to actually gift the dead sweater pattern to one of you. If you're interested in this pattern, please comment down below and just mention that sweater in some ways so that I know that you're interested in getting a copy and I'll just draw a random winner in a few days and I'll reach out to you. Finished object number two. 
this is a weird one for me not a weird one but like an unusual one so this is a tiny scarf i kind of fell into the bandwagon of tiny scarves this is scarf number one from my favorite things knitwear and it's knitted in concept by katia silky lace in the color 184 medium rose I actually knitted a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. The pattern actually suggests to knit six of these repeats and I think I did it a little bit more, like a couple more, one and a half more, something like that, because I just wanted to finish up the yarn. And with a triangle of shawl like this, it's so easy to just knit until your yarn is up. So you just start from the top and you continue knitting down and so you can just continue until you have just enough left to do the bind off and I think that's brilliant because no one wants to have like a little bit of a teeny tiny leftover that you don't know what to do with. I am not sold on the usefulness of a tiny scarf. I think that's what everyone says when they try on their scarves like I don't know if I'll use it and things like that but like you can secure it here and then do this I'm not sure if it goes well with the rust color but I'll keep it here I think the appeal of tiny scarves for me is you can use one ball of yarn and be done with it, which I like. I don't have a lot of like spare, solitary, lonely balls of yarn, but this time around, um, this yarn was actually gifted to me um, when I made a big order to Las Tijeras Magicas. It just was gifted because I think I made a big order and they kind of sneaked in a little extra ball. So yeah, so just if you have a single ball of yarn that you want to use, I think this is a perfectly good use instead of mixing and matching different balls of yarn to make a bigger project. I don't love like stripes or things like that and so I think just make a single color accessory is the way to go for me. I think it would make a good gift for someone and it's very soft and it's also very portable if you're looking for something that you can just knit in the car and on commute or like places like this is a 50 gram ball of yarn and so you can kind of easily carry around for those of you who like to knit lace this it's a good idea it has a good amount of garter stitch but also some rows of lace which is very simple lace yarn over and knits two together why i thought i would enjoy this is because i think you can just after you're done using it so maybe if you enter in the building after being out in the cold you can kind of fold it quite small and tuck it in in I don't know, your pocket or your backpack, your purse. So I think it's just very portable. And I remember when I used to go shopping more than I do now, which is, I, I never go anymore. I used to maybe wear big scarves warm in December, like looking for Christmas presents maybe. And I would be out in the cold and be very happy with my very chunky scarf but then inside the building or the store I would like melt and sweat and I didn't know where to put the scarf or the big shawl and I think like if you were to use this it would still protect your neck from the cold and then if you're inside indoors and it's quite warm you can take it off and place it somewhere somewhere being inside your pocket or backpack or purse. You could also use the pattern to make a bigger shawl, uh, just continue longer and longer. I think it's a very versatile, you can make it a little bit shorter if you want to. So just the neckerchief, I think it's the proper term. I don't know, can I also wear it on my head? I know people do. Should I cut this out of this video? I'm not sure yet if i'll gift this one to someone or if i'll keep it for myself i kind of want to keep it we'll see maybe my mom would like it i'll have to see that said i don't plan to knit lots more 
tiny scarves for my neck. I think I'm more of a big shawl person, but this was a kind of a fun, quick experiment with a single ball of yarn. And those were my finished objects. I would like to show you what I have in progress, which is actually not like in progress as in on the needles, because what I've done is I put some scrap yarn and I blocked this, laid down to dry and tried it on. And so I will try it on for you now and then we'll talk. So this is my start on a Monday sweater by Petit Knit and I have knitted with the yarn that you see here, it's so soft. This is called Nocciole by Le Wolle. This is made here in Italy. I know the people who make this yarn. Yarn, 10 out of 10. Color, softness, feel while knitting with it, 100% love it. I want at least a sweater in every color that they have available. They have a lovely like honey color and then a pumpkin color and electric blue one. Anyway, I think I might have to do at least a couple more. One thing about this pattern, like I kind of hinted at before, is the ease that my garment came up with. I knew that the Monday sweater, which is what I'm wearing, has a little bit of extra positive ease compared to what I love and what I'm used to. So for example, compared to the No Frills sweater by Petit Knit, this pattern, the Monday sweater, has more positive ease. So if you were to pick the same size in both patterns, the Monday sweater will come out larger, which it's what happened in my case. And possibly also my row gauge is a little bit off, maybe it's bigger. So the issue that I have with the garment that I'm knitting is possibly not too much, like the actual circumference here, like this much ease, I think it's the underarm. Like the underarm is too deep for me. So here is my armpit. Is this an awkward pose? Yes. Um, so I think if the armpit was a little bit higher, I would be okay probably with more positive ease in the body area. However, I don't know if I love all of this underarm space. It's a bit much. My current plan is to frog a little bit. So I will frog and reduce the underarm depth here by a few centimeters and split again for the sleeves and try again. So I actually have to frog both the body that I've knitted and the sleeves because I was so smart. Well, I thought I was so smart to actually do a little bit of the sleeves, a little bit of the body. I, I do like to do body and sleeves alternatively. Is that, a, is that a word? Like a little bit of the sleeves, a little bit of the body so that you don't get like sleeve fatigue. I kind of do like to do a little bit of both. However, in this case, it also means that I'll have to frog from three sides <laughs> instead of just from the body, but it's okay. Actually, I think now that I've knitted this guy here, I have a better understanding of how much positive ease is the maximum positive ease that I'd like and maybe what's the minimum positive ease that I would like. Because for example, the dad sweater that we talked about before, I think is kind of the goal or like the width that I would like. And so this correspond to the ideal positive ease that I would like. And I think, for example, this is too much. And so I'll try to get this back to a positive ease that it's somewhat closer to the dad's sweater. And it should be doable because this is a raglan construction. So I can just frog and try again. Also, I can try it on. So it should be doable. Look forward to seeing me next time with a more fitted version of this sweater. And more fitted is not the way I should put this. It's more like uh, appropriately oversized. Other than that, the pattern is quite lovely in the sense that it has a folded neck, which is very, very easy to knit. And it's actually um, 
top down, including the folded collar. So you actually need everything in one go, let's say. You don't pick up stitches um, afterwards for the neck bend. You just do it in one go. So it's the perfect top down raglan sweater construction other than the too much ease for me. So, and the other thing is actually I have only one bow left like this is what i have left and so even if i wanted to keep these as oversized like it is now i don't think i would be able to do the cuffs and the bottom band with this much left so i think frogging back and reducing the sizing uh, would help me with my yarn management and not having to buy an extra bowl of this colorway which I actually don't know if I would find the same dye lot so if I can avoid the issue of having to find more yarn um, it's great and yes thank you for asking I will keep on a half finished sweater for the rest of this episode there are a lot of needles so i don't know how i will avoid them clicking on my desk but let's try so another work in progress which is actually on many needles not just on the needles is the oversized seasons cardigan by ozetta so it is just started so you cannot really tell it's a cardigan <laughs> just started here maybe i can kind of flip it around so you can see the patterning let's do this it's a color so this is the oversized seasoned cardigan there's also a sweater version of this which looks lovely and i might consider doing that in the future however this stitch pattern which is half fisherman rib is perfect for cardigans i hate knitting cardigans because their typical stock knit cardigan you have full rows of knits which are lovely but also full rows of pearls and so you do 50 percent knits 50 percent pearls and 50 percent pearls is a lot for me i do not enjoy that however this stitch pattern into a cardigan version means that you have knit pearl knit pearl knit pearl on the right side so what you are seeing and i mean technically the knits are knit through the stitch below the current one but for your hands they feel like they're doing knit one pearl one knit one pearl one like ribbing and then on the wrong side it's knit full row the full row you just knit so it's actually 75% knits and only 25% pearls for the cardigan, which is ideal. This is my swatch, which is unraveling a little bit, but it looks lovely. This is kind of the right side and you have, it looks like fisherman rib, it looks like brioche. And on the wrong side, I don't love it. It looks like kind of a messy, a messy situation, but no one will see it everyone will just look at the cardigan from outside it's super squishy the yarn it's cascade 220 super wash i've heard about cascade 20 a lot and so when i was in minneapolis earlier this year i grabbed a few skeins of this cascade 220 and i did see that it said super wash it doesn't matter to me as much i think like if i had seen two different versions, one superwash and one that wasn't, I would have taken the non-superwash version, but they only had the superwash version and I mean, I'm okay with that. It's very plump and very round and kind of hefty. It's pretty soft to the touch. And yeah, loving this so far in terms of the look of the stitch pattern and in terms of actually knitting experience. It is a pattern that I cannot knit on while watching TV as much or talking to my daughter because you have some increases and you need to remember or like look at what row you're on in order to understand if you need to make some extra increases. So it is very, very doable, but like not while you talk with a toddler or watch TV and you cannot take your eyes off the screen because 
something will happen and you would not know about. Still very relaxing, but not like super mindless, which I think it's okay. The button band is knitted with the pattern itself. So together with the cardigan, you also knit the button band, meaning that you don't need to go back into the cardigan and pick up stitches and knit the button band, which I think is a big plus, but it is knitted with smaller needles compared to the body. So what the pattern suggests, and I'm gonna to try to show you, but what the pattern suggests is to have double pointed needles on the button band stitches and use like a regular needle for the rest. So I don't have double pointed needles ever, like in no sizes. And so what I've done is I'm using a small circular needle as a double pointed needle. <laughs> and I'm using my set of shorties from Trigo, the blue version, the blue pouch. And I'm not loving those small circular needles for sleeves, which is what I bought them for, but they came very handy for the button band. Looking forward to finish this or at least like make a good amount of progress. One thing actually that I love about this pattern is that you don't have to choose your size until you're about to split for the sleeves. So what I've knitted so far is size agnostic in the sense that I didn't have to pick a size so far. And the first part, which is what I'm doing, it's the same for every size. And so I feel like it's actually very beneficial because then you can try on this guy before you split for the sleeves. So maybe based on the feeling that you have or your tastes at the moment, and then you decide the size. Sorry for the tickling of the needles, but I can put this off the side now. Only a couple of works in progress and you've seen both before and they're both shawls. So we'll go super fast, maybe. So one is my knit in the dark shawl. This is a garter stitch shawl that has no actual pattern behind it. And it's a shawl that I knit on while I'm in my daughter's dark bedroom at night and she's falling asleep and I either like sing to her or like talk to her or listen to her talking about her day at the daycare or talking about stuffed animals. I like to have something to knit on and I think just having something to knit on relaxes me a little bit after a long day. It looks like this so far. It is a wrap, technically, if we want to follow the right nomenclature of shawls or accessories and it's a rectangular wrap. You can wear it like this, maybe after you weaved in some ends. <laughs> or I'm thinking we could also fold it in half lengthwise and use it as a scarf. So I think this could be good to go under a coat, for example. I think what I will use it for is to be super cozy while I work. So I think I'll just wear it like this. Like this, you can already imagine me like typing on my laptop and doing my work and having this on top, keeping me warm. Do -do 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 -do. How do I look? So uh, yeah, it's just a plain garter stitch shawl. The only thing I'm doing is slipping the last stitch of each row purl-wise and it gives a little bit of a slightly more polished edge here at the top. Um, I plan to knit, I think, another ball of yarn. I have two more. Maybe I'll knit both of these into the shawl to just make it extra long and cozy, but we'll see. I don't know. At least I'll add another one and then we'll measure it again. I'm using the Pearl Soho's elementary wrap pattern to be inspired by measurements. And I think they're suggesting to make the wrap 180 centimeters long, which is way taller than how tall I am, for example, just to give you an idea, because I don't know, I guess it would be like five, seven, I don't know, but like it will become taller than me, for example if I follow the dimensions on the elementary wrap pattern. So maybe I'll just do that since I do have the yarn. 
it's been so cozy and so wonderful to have something to knit on that you don't actually have to make an effort for and I can knit it in the dark I could knit it at the cinema or like anywhere else where you actually don't have good visibility I don't really go to the cinema but that's a possibility I'm just trying to inspire you if you do have occasions in your life where you're in the dark but you still want to do something with your hands it's possible it is possible just to do something like this and I also have another example of something that I want to try to do in the future so this is a scarf that I made many many years ago I think you can kind of tell from the color palette which is something that I might not gravitate towards as much anymore and this is a 100% scrappy scarf. I held two strands of fingering sock yarn throughout. When one color was done I would just kind of switch with another color and this is garter stitch so this is totally possible for me to knit on in the dark and I think if I were to do something similar I could also sew it here and make it into a cowl. I think this will be my next in the dark project after I'm done with the very long wrap. Yes, I forgot to mention that the super cozy long wrap is knitted up in Drops Puna, which is 100% alpaca yarn. So I was a little bit wary and worried about using this for garment and so I kept this aside for a shawl and I think it was the right call. This is very very soft and stretchy and again allowed me many hours of relaxation while knitting this waiting for my daughter to fall asleep. And paired with the wrap that I talked to you about we have a half and half wrap that's mid row of course. I think this happens to everyone that I see in podcasts. <laughs> like, oh, I'm half row. We'll make it work. But what this is, is a half and half triangle wrap by Pearl Soho. And I've finished my first triangle, which I've knit in Pearl Soho linen quill in this reed gray colorway, which is so soft and squishy. Also, I would call it like soft in terms of the shade that this is. It's a very soft gray and I'm pairing it with this blue yellow shade, which is called turmeric yellow. It's again, Pearl Soho linen quill. I bought three bowls, three skeins of each color. And for example, for the first half, I have this much left which is 75 percent of a skein so i imagine that i will also have like 75 percent of another skein and so i kind of combine a skein and a half of leftover and i hope to find something to knit with the leftovers i'm thinking maybe a hat or another like a scarf or something like that oh maybe a shawl for my daughter my daughter is two years old and I don't think she needs a shawl, but that could be cute. And the combination I really like because it's a kind of a neutral shade with a pop of color. And I think a lot of people have gone this route with their half and half wraps. I don't have a lot to show you. With a peak of pop of color here. I'm excited to see how big it'll become because I think right now it's kind of scrunched up on my needles but also this is garter stitch so I imagine that after blocking it'll relax even more. I can see myself and I mentioned this before needing more of these shawls. I don't know if I need more shawls but maybe this could become gifts. So they could be like a pleasant knitting experience and also pleasant gifted item. And I think that's it. I only have one acquisition to show you, but if you're moving on from this video, thank you for joining me. It was such a pleasure. 
if you want to stick around, I'll tell you what I acquired. And it is a combination of Filcolana Arveta and Filcolana Tilia. So these are the fingering wool and the mohair from Filcolana. This is Tilia, super, super fuzzy and soft and the Arveta, I think it's technically a sock yarn, maybe, it has some nylon, so you can probably use it for socks. I will be combining them, holding them double to make a sweater. What a surprise! I don't know if it will be another dad's sweater or ooh, maybe like a Stockholm sweater by Petit Knit. Um, I know Ozetta has a few options, I don't know. If you have suggestions for sweater, not a cardigan, I think. I think I have one on my needles and I'll stick with one. But like if you have recommendations for a sweater pattern with mohair, send my way. There are never too many recommendations. And the color that I chose, it has a number that it's 354, 354. However, it's called light truffle. I love truffle, the savory version. I also love chocolate truffles. I also love this color. So it's a win-win-win-win situation. That's it. I don't think I have anything else to show you, but while I knit a little bit on my half and half triangle shawl so that I can finish the row and maybe show you <laughs> the progress in a better shape. I'll also, I think, kind of mention something that you might have realized already, that I don't do a lot of Christmas gifts. I'm not one that knits like socks or hats for everyone in their family. And I don't know if that's a positive thing. I feel like for my own kind of mental health and relaxation, not having like a pipeline of gifts that I want to knit and get ready for a certain day, in the year is good and positive but however i don't know i feel like some of my family members and friends would really enjoy something handmade so i think i want to strike a balance between maybe i will knit a few things if i can otherwise i will not knit gifts for friends and family the tiny shawl could be a good idea for a gift and i do have some yarn in my stash for hats, for example. And so I'll see throughout the month of December if I want to sneak in some hats. And I would be actually interested in your take on Christmas gifts and knitting. If you are a big gift knitter or not, I don't know, it kind of just interests me, the attitude that people have towards kind of using their time to make really thoughtful gifts but also like at the same time, not getting overwhelmed with the deadlines that they put on themselves. I really, really admire knitters who choose to knit items for their loved ones. I would like to be one of those people. However, I kind of know that I should not put pressure on myself and have like a long list of items that I want to get to and gift to people because I think that would add stress to my life. And I really am trying to keep knitting as a hobby that relieves stress and not adds stress on top of my life. I'll see if I can sneak in a couple of hats that I could use as gifts. I have some yarn that could serve the purpose of becoming a hat. I also love to make headbands. I've made a few in the past for me and my daughter. I cannot be bothered to knit socks. I've done in the past, it is a little bit cumbersome because of the small needle size. However, my husband and my daughter have a matching pair that I made them last year for Christmas. And it really warms my heart when they wear them together. Maybe matching hats could be a thing that I do. Okay, this is going in a very rambly direction. So I just want to wish you a good November. We'll definitely see each other in December. This is not kind of my last episode for this year or anything like that. I also want to make everything that I knit in 2022 
type video which I've seen a lot at the beginning of this year and I loved every single one of them stay warm stay comfortable maybe drink some more of that drink that you grabbed at the beginning of this episode and i don't know just take a chill thank you so much for joining me bye oh i forgot to show the <laughs> half and half wrap after i finished the row this is the conservative <laughs> half and this is the boom in your face half. Mm. Bye friends.